Welcome to Issues in Japan. The topic this time is the Yano Paper and the Ministry of Finance for Getting the Welfare of the People. I would like to share the insights of Dr. Koichi Hamada, Professor Emeritus at Yale University and former Cabinet Counselor to the Prime Minister of Japan. Dr. Hamada contributed an article to Newsweek Japan in response to the article by Koji Yano, Vice Minister of Finance, titled Vice Minister of Finance Speaks Out. National finances will fail if things continue as they are that appeared in the November issue of the Bunjay Shunju magazine. This time's video is a preserved edition. Mr. Koji Yeno, the Vice Minister of the Ministry of Finance, published an article in the November issue of the Bunjay Shunju titled If This Situation Continues, The Nation's Finances Will Go Bankrupt. The article has attracted attention because it is a frank expression of opinion on the basic issues of public finance by someone who is at the top of the bureaucracy, so to speak. The article criticizes the lax fiscal measures taken in the wake of the COVID-19 disaster, saying, the country will sink if the government continues with its popularity-seeking policy of spreading around the budget. The article gives the following reasons. 1. The Japanese government's budget deficit and excessive debt are among the worst in the world. 2. Japan's finances will be ruined if the current situation continues. People don't realize that the Titanic is approaching the iceberg. However, there are many problems with the implicit assumptions of Mr. Yeno's paper and his understanding of the economic mechanism, and I cannot help but worry that any change in fiscal policy in accordance with his argument would not be in the best interest of the people. First, Yano's premise that Japan's fiscal situation is the worst in the world is wrong. Second, his argument that the government's balance sheet should be balanced like that of households is also wrong in terms of macroeconomics. Third, Mr. Yano's focus is primarily on fiscal balance, and he views the welfare of the people suffering under the COVID-19 pandemic from above. The contents of the article can only be seen as a document that asserts the self-serving logic of the bureaucracy handed down in the Ministry of Finance from long ago, believing it to be absolutely correct. In short, the Titanic's approaching iceberg that Yano's paper warns us about is itself a fiction. While the current generation is facing a life-and-death situation due to the COVID-19 disaster, Yano's call to shut the crocodile's mouth is merely a call to balance the budget. I seriously fear that the interests of the Ministry of Finance and the balance of the budget will take precedence over the true welfare of the people. In ancient history, there is an anecdote called the People's Kitchen of Emperor Nintaku, who had a magnificent ancient tomb and carried out a grand flood control project. One day, Emperor Nintaku climbed up a small mountain and found that there was no fire or smoke coming from the people's stove. The emperor ordered, since I know that the people's life is not good, I will exempt them from labor, which served as a tax in those days, for three years. Because of this, the emperor's palace fell into disrepair and began to leak rain. Three years later, when he looked at the houses again, he was pleased to see smoke rising, but Emperor Nintaku still continued to reduce labor. This shows that the idea of a welfare state existed in Japan from ancient times. As far as the Yano paper is concerned, there is no indication of Emperor Nintaka's kind of compassion for his people. All I can think of is that the modern bureaucracy is trying to put the government's kitchen before the people's livelihood. The way the Ministry of Finance explains the government debt is logically clear. According to it, the total amount of Japanese government bonds divided by GDP is outstanding in the world. Since the people will eventually have to pay back the government bonds, the government will have to cut back on spending or raise taxes to avoid going broke. In order to avoid increasing the government's debt, the government should not overborrow in each budget year, which means that the government should aim to achieve a balanced primary balance or surplus in each fiscal year. When we say that ordinary businesses and individuals have too much debt, what do we mean by too much? The Ministry of Finance's standard is that Japan is the worst country in the world because its debt is many times higher than its GDP. However, if you ask that question to companies and people with assets, they will probably say, I have assets, so I can afford to go into debt. 
If you ask the same question to people who own not only financial assets, but also real assets such as land, forests, houses, etc., they will probably reply, I own real assets, so it is natural for me to have a lot of debt. The 2018 Fiscal Monitor Report of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, of which the Ministry of Finance itself is a member, calculates figures on how rich governments are after taking into account their real assets. Of course, there is room for error in the estimates, but the 2016 estimate of the richness of Japan's government, which also takes into account real assets, shows that although Japan is a net debtor in terms of net assets, it is a relatively low net debtor, healthier than the United Kingdom, Austria, and the United States, not to mention the highly indebted Portugal. This is not the case. This is very different from the image of Japan as a highly indebted country that is portrayed in the publicity of the Ministry of Finance. In short, Japan is by no means the world's largest debtor nation if one takes into account the real assets held by the Japanese government. This is a factual error in the data of the Yano paper. Moreover, the Ministry of Finance, through its publicity and other means, seems to be trying hard to implant the idea that Japan is the world's largest debtor nation in the consciousness of the Japanese people, and sometimes even in the consciousness of economists. The rapid increase in the ratio of outstanding government debt to GDP is what Yeno calls the titanic danger. Even in economics, the dominant Ricardian view was that the government's fiscal balance must be balanced, at least in the long run, and that the private sector will act in the expectation that its finances will be balanced. However, government deficits are not always bad. First, when the interest rate on government bonds is lower than the economic growth rate, the ratio of outstanding government bonds to GDP does not increase. Secondly, under similar conditions, when the real interest rate is lower than the real economic growth rate, there is a high probability that the government deficit will increase the welfare of the people. Third, as Yano pointed out, when the private sector lacks the appetite for consumption and investment demand and the economy is in recession due to an excess supply of goods, monetary policy can reinforce those demands and fiscal policy can stimulate excess demand, allowing the national economy to operate at full capacity. This is also the reason why Keynesian economics saved us from the Great Recession. Especially after a major earthquake or when the public is suffering from the COVID-19, as it is now, trying to maintain fiscal equilibrium immediately requires raising tax rates, which adversely affects the price mechanism. It is the business-as-usual wisdom of the economic leveling theory of public finance to run a budget deficit in times of disaster. The idea that the burden of disasters should be borne by the current generation will impose an extra burden on the generation that is suffering now. The tax hike campaign conducted by the Neon Kizai Shimbun after the Great East Japan earthquake, mobilizing famous economists, is not only inhuman, but also unreasonable. Therefore, the idea of the economic mechanism on which the Yano paper is based is also wrong. The Yano paper states, This is not something that can be evaluated differently depending on whether you are a Keynesian or a monetarist, or on the position of your economic theory, or your ideas. In other words, there is only one result of arithmetic calculation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. However, economists of the past and present have studied economics from a broader perspective of how to enrich the lives of the people, instead of focusing on balancing the budget. Isn't it cruel for the people suffering from the COVID-19 disaster that the Ministry of Finance, which has a strong authority, and has therefore attracted people with good grades and administrative skills, is preaching as if increasing taxes to increase the authority of its ministry is in the interest of the people? What was most disconcerting about Mr. Yeno's article was that he created a human image that was convenient for the Ministry of Finance, with little data to back up his theories about fiscal austerity, such as the economy will not recover even if we spend more, the people do not want to be bullied, and people want to travel. In other words, it is a convenient image for the Ministry of Finance. From my own experience as Director of the Economic and Social Research Institute of the Cabinet Office and Counselor to the Prime Minister, 
I understand the worries of bureaucrats who serve politicians with their expertise. It is true that once a policy decision has been made, the bureaucrats will follow it, but until then, they will discuss it with their superiors with all their might. I greatly welcome the courage of Vice Minister Yeno to publish his article, and I am grateful to him for giving us the opportunity to discuss policy issues with the public. Although we disagree with each other, I can understand his serious policy attitude to realize the tradition of his ministry in terms of policy.